the bell three times in honor of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good evening. Thank you for coming out. The confession and absolution based on the Ten Commandments is found in your bulletin. Please stand as you are able. The Lord God spoke these words. I am, I am the Lord, Lord your God. God. You, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember, Remember the Sabbath. Keep, keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You, you shall not kill. kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall no. not steal. You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You shall no. not cover no. thy neighbor's wife. No. You shall no. not cover no. your neighbor's house. Let us confess our sins to God the Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed. By my, my fault, by my fault, by my most grievous, grievous fault, I, I humbly ask God, God to forgive me and set me upon his pathway of life and life. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Strengthen us by your Spirit, and make us worthy of your call, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. The sermon tonight will be on, based upon Psalm 62. Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days Nineveh, <coughs> yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sack sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published throughout Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and let them all call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn away from his evil ways and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned away from their evil ways, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 62, verses 
5 through 12, read responsibly. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He is only who is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, and I shall not be greatly shaken. How, how long will all of you attack a man to batter him like leaning on a tottering fence? They only when they trust him from his high position, they take pleasure in falsehood. They flesh with their mouths, but they know it at first. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is with him. That's from him. He is my rock, my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. In God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust is in him all times, but he will be forever our heart for him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balance, they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no remaining hopes on robbery. If the riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, but power belongs to God. And then to you, Lord, for all steadfast love, for you will render to a man according to his work. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none. And those who, who mourn as though they had not were, were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it's tonight from the first chapter of Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boats, mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. It's so good to see all of you tonight. Thank you for coming. St. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, wrote, The appointed time has grown short. Jesus in Mark's gospel says, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. We all know, unfortunately from experience we know, that life can be short. No one is promised another day. Therefore, it is time. It is time to remember God and to remember what is truly important in life. So if now is the time, where are we to go for some perspective? Where do we go to find out what is true and what is false? In other words, who can you trust? It was a relevant question 3,000 years ago when David wrote Psalm 62. And it's a very relevant question today. David tells us we are not to put our trust in people or in ourselves, or in our things. Psalm 62 tells us to trust in God and God alone. For from God alone comes our salvation. And I say thanks be to God for his love and mercy, for his son died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. This is our salvation. Listen to the opening verse of Psalm 62, how it praises God. 
And I quote, For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. There are six ways that David describes God in this psalm. God is my rock, my salvation, my fortress, my hope and my glory and my refuge. And a seventh time, David writes that God is our refuge. What David is saying is whatever happens in life, he says he will not be moved. He will not be shaken. He is standing firm in God. This psalm, however, does speak of trouble. There is high anxiety in the psalm. And the source of David's anxiety is other people. In verse 3, David asks the question, how long? Apparently, David has been under attack from his enemies for a long, long time. And as it says, his enemies only plan to tear him down, to batter him, to even murder him. And reading these verses, my rhetorical question is, who would ever want to be king with enemies like that? Why would you want to have so many people against you? We likely don't have such powerful enemies against us here at St. Paul's. However, we do have troubles. We do have anxiety. One source of trouble and anxiety for us these days is this pandemic and this vaccine. And we too ask, how long? How long will this virus be around? It seems to be around for a long, long time. How long until this vaccine is available to everyone? How long until it's available to those who need it most? It's an urgent question. How long will we have to wait? David continues and writes that we should not trust in people. David knows that people may bless you with their mouth, but in their hearts they're cursing. David writes that people, rich or poor, are but a breath. We are not to put our trust in people. And maybe it's because I'm from New York, but trust in politicians? It's hard to trust them. Trust in the media and what's said on TV? I don't think so. Trust big tech? Not me. I know it sounds very cynical, but David tells us to be careful in trusting people. As well, we shouldn't put our trust in things or our money. All that is but momentary. It's all but a breath. But according to David, there is one we can trust. In verse 8, the psalmist writes that we should trust God at all times. We are to pour our hearts out to him, for God is a refuge for us. Psalm 8 was a very personal prayer until verse 8. Psalm 8. Was. Psalm 62 was a very individual cry of lament until verse 8, where David is inviting everyone to join him that we should, we should all trust in God, because God is a refuge for us. When David says, pour out your hearts, that's what we do when we pray. Prayer, pouring out your heart to God, is a sign of trust in the Lord. And I love verse 11 and 12. I think they're just so beautiful. And it tells us why. It tells us why we can trust in God. Listen to verse 11 and 12. It says, once God has spoken, Twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his works. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this. God only needs to speak once. He doesn't need to repeat himself. But we need to hear it twice. We need to first hear it with our ears and our mind, and then with our hearts, and take his word to heart. It says... Power belongs to God alone. That's good news. Because God combines power with love. With love. That is such good news. God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful, but he combines it with that love of his. Because God wants us all to come to salvation. He wants all the faithful to be in heaven with him one day. But that last line comes out. For you will render to a man according to his works. First time I read that, that was kind of scary. I wonder if it scares you that God renders to us according to our works. 
probably should scare us. But as our gospel says, now is the time. The kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is at hand. And because the kingdom of God is at hand, because Jesus is here among us, he tells us to do two things. He tells us to repent and believe. Believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ that he is the Son of God come into the world for the forgiveness of our sins. If we believe that, well, then we'll have nothing to worry about. And yet, still, we should repent and believe. Pray a prayer of repentance for your own sins, for our sins, and for the sins of our country. Our country's been greatly on my mind this week. And as I was reminded last week, don't ever stop praying for each other, too. Pray for our country. Pray for each other. And then add one more prayer. Add one more prayer. Pray that this vaccine becomes available quickly. Life is short. There are people that need this vaccine urgently. But trust in God that it will happen. Here again how David describes God. My rock, my salvation, my fortress, my hope, my glory, my refuge is God. Our refuge is in God. Our refuge is in God, who is all-powerful and filled with love. Those are the two reasons we should trust God alone. He's powerful and he loves us. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. Waiting for God in silence is good. For I believe what Jesus said. The time is now. The kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. We pray for healing. Come, Lord Jesus, heal our nation. We pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we next pray for an end to this pandemic. Please, Lord, we pray for the vaccine to be available to all who need it. We pray for all health care workers. And we pray for all who are sick with this virus. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those suffering from loneliness. For those who are grieving, for those who are depressed and those suffering from addictions, heal us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the outreach ministries of this church, so that all may be fed, we pray for the food pantry. That a once and for all cure for cancer may be found, we pray for the Relay for Life ministry. That God's comfort may be shared and found in times of crisis, we pray for our quilting ministry and for Lutheran world hunger and disaster. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, be with us and bring your healing touch to those who are sick and suffering. We pray for those serving in the military far from home. Derek, Richard, Charlie, Peyton, Manny. 
for Anna, John, for David and Nate, for Jacob, Michael, Anthony, and Tina. We pray for our homebound members, Shelly, Norma, and Jen. And we pray for those who are sick and in need of healing. We pray first for Brody. We pray for Barbara, <coughs> for Russ, for Bill, for Ann Catherine, for Jim, for Jeannie, for Gwen, for Cheryl and Ken, for Jan, for Regina, for Sandy, for Bob, for Linda, for Joan, for Linda and John, for Jane, for Kate, for Donovan and Will, for John, for Nancy, for Ivy, for Mary Lou, for Jean, for Katie, for Chase, for Christoph, for Debbie, for Ken and Caitlin. We pray also for Tim Miller, we pray also for Richard McCullough, and all those we name in our hearts and on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Prayer. we pray for our church council. We pray for all pastors. We pray for church musicians and all those who serve the church in any capacity. We pray for our current Bishop Michael and for the future Bishop of the Allegheny Synod who will be elected in June. And we pray, Lord, for this church that we always are faithful and seek your will in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love and mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Peace be with you. Thank you, Bishop of Before we begin the Eucharistic prayer, uh, I will once again be passing out the communion set to you. If you haven't been here in a while, there's a tab on this communion set that you need to push down first, and that should release, help release the top layer, which you peel back, the, the clear layer you peel back to get to the wafer. And then you peel back the entire oil to get to the uh, to get to the grape juice and after you're done with it if you could put it back into the the holy bag and on your way out deposit it in the in the trash at the back now i'm going to commune one as well Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given to us, ourselves, our time and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should not give way to his own brilliant light, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 hol
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, we gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy Son. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on Father, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those, those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the Lord's kingdom. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant me peace. I will now pass out the communion sets. If you would, please have a seat. And then uh, once we all have it, I'll come back and, and say the words, and then we will all commune together. Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't have any announcements. I know the food pantry was today. I don't know how many they were. They served, I'll find that out tomorrow. But uh, I'm confident that it was very, very successful. So now the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
ました。